is another testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. We are back. Quick Hits comes at you twice a day, every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day. Uh, 8 to 10 minutes per show, twice a day. Um, yesterday we talked about Chris Colbert. Um, today we're going to talk about the other half of the, well, the other side of the 130-pound street. Jamal Herring versus Corey Stevenson fight is in the works. Uh, we're getting close to two are, are, trading, are trading back and forth on social media. Um, but before we do that, please like and subscribe. Share this on all platforms. Uh, also, please subscribe to our new channel, Texas Boxing Scene, which is completely dedicated to Texas boxing. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's get um, let's get right. Uh, and all, also, uh, Texas Boxing Scene, all proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. It's near and dear to our heart. Uh, please subscribe to that. Uh, help us get that monetized and uh, up and running as quickly as possible. Let's get into today's show. This is the big news. I've been calling for this fight for a while. I've been saying this for a while. You got Jamel Herring from Long Island. You got Shakoy Stevenson from Newark, New Jersey. Let's meet in the middle. Madison Square Garden. Let's do it, fellas. Um, this is a great fight. This is really, really, really high-level boxing. Um, Jamel Herring looked sensational in his Frampton fight. He had good wins over Ito. Uh, he's had good wins recently. Um, and uh, Shakur Stevenson... You know, it's obviously an incredible talent. Uh, silver medalist, um, former world, uh, you know, former world champion at 126 pounds. He's still only 24 years old. Recently, though, is his uh, opposition hasn't been great. Um, you know, he beat Joet Gonzalez in a fight that I was impressed by back in October of 2019. Um, and since the pandemic, he's had three kind of tune-up fights. Um, at 130, Felix Carabello, Tokakan Clary, and then Jeremiah Nakatalia. Um, and he's not lost a round. <laughs> Guys, I want you to consider this. In those three fights, he's not lost a single round on a single scorecard. Now, look, I get it. Those guys aren't world beaters, but they're not terrible fighters either. That's how good he is. He has not lost. He got one knockout in those three fights. So that's 12, 22, and then a six round knockout. So you guys, uh, you know, 12 round unanimous decision, 10 round a unanimous decision, and then six round KO victory. So that's 12, 10, 6, 22, 28 rounds. In 28 rounds, He's not lost a round on a single scorecard. He came out and apologized for his last performance. Like that's who he is. He's a master boxer, um, and he's gonna. And what he does is gonna be good enough to beat Jamel Herring, who I love. I love Jamel Herring. I wish and hope for Jamel Herring the best. I want Jamel Herring to win the fight. I, I just don't really see how he's gonna do that. He's gonna have to get on the inside and rough him up. That's not really his game plan. So he's got to step out of his comfort zone and kind of rough him up, although he showed some power in knocking out Frampton. I don't think he's going to be able to put hands on Stevenson like that. So I think this is a high-end, very high-class boxing fight uh, between two technicians in there. I just think one's a very good technician in Jamal Herring, and the other is a master at work in Sequoia Stevenson, who literally does not lose a round. Going back his last four fights, he's lost one round in the Joaquin Gonzalez fight, and in the three fights since, he's not lost a round on a card. I mean, it, it's that kind of brilliance. It's kind of like what you see um, Jacob DeGrom doing in baseball with the Mets. It's, just, it, it, it's masterpiece after masterpiece. Um, what I do want to add to that, though, is I do think Chris Colbert beats the winner of this fight. Now that that fight would happen, Chris Colbert even acknowledged that it's not going to happen because he didn't want to talk about it, right? He was asked in the post fight press conference by Ali Sekhmak, I believe, um, if he wanted to fight the winner. And uh, Chris Colbert, who I like, I like his personality. I, he's like his straight focus. And I'm not going to talk about it because it's not going to happen. Because apparently, like we did on the Tank Davis episode a couple days ago, the fighters work for the promoter. So 
Um, you know, the fighters risk their lives to try to make the promoter happy. And then the promoter makes the fight and they don't really have any input on it. Apparently, that's the new dynamic, which blows my mind. I, I don't understand why they stay with that promoter. Why is Chris Colbert with PBC if he doesn't get to pick his opponents? If he's going to say, I want that fight, but I'm not going to get it because of the promotional, uh, you know, because of the politics involved, why is he there? Get yourself out of your contract. He wants to fight Santa Cruz, which I think is a fun fight. In the interim, like, it's a fun fight. Let's make that fight. Let's have this fight. And let's have the winners face off. But I'm going to do probably that show on that tomorrow. That's a fun fight, too, with Colbert and uh, and Santa Cruz. Uh, but this fight looks to be getting close. I, they, they haven't said Madison Square Garden. I would just assume that because, yeah, where else would you put this thing? It would be such a great fight to have in New York City. Long Island boy. New York, New Jersey boy. Let's meet in the middle. Um, Masterclass box Again, I, I know a lot of y'all are going to say this fight's going to be boring. And, and if you're a casual, uh, I can see that. But this is such high-level boxing. This is a great fight. Um, and it's, it's it's obviously the best fight Shakur Stevens, the best fighter that Shakur Stevens has been in the ring with. And it's the best fighter, honestly. And I know he just beat Frank, who's on his way to the Hall of Fame. But, or at least I would vote for him. Um, Herring... And Stevenson, Stevenson is the best guy that Herring's been in the ring with, right? Like, St Stevenson, I don't think Herring's ever fought anyone better than Stevenson at this point in their career. And I know he just beat Frampton. That's how highly I think of Shakur Stevenson. Shakur Stevenson wins one way. And I always say you can't win at the highest level consistently if you only fight one way. Well, he's so good at that one way, he'll beat any, anyone in that division minus Chris Culbert. And I don't know what we do with Tank. Is Tank with her? I don't think Tank's coming back down to 30. I think he's going to 35, but we'll get into that later. Um, but this fight looks like we're getting close, and it's a great fight. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Uh, let me know who you think would win. Do you think it's also going to be in Madison Square Garden? I don't know where else you would put it. Uh, but please like and subscribe uh, to uh, 3D Boxing on all form social media. Please share this on all form social media and Texas Boxing Scene. Is our brand new channel. Um, Texas Boxing is a brand new channel, completely dedicated to Texas Boxing. All proceeds go to autism research and recovery. So uh, please help us raise as much money for that. Help us get that monetized. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share that page as well. You're and dear our heart. Uh, it is July 5th, 2021. Ivan Calderon is still out in the boxing hall of fame. Let's get that to change. Let's make that change. Iron Boy needs to be in uh, from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.